Um, welcome, everybody. Um, so first of all, I'll introduce myself. My name is uh, Jurgen Groot. I'm one of the teaching leads um, at, in the Blizzard Institute. And um, now I'm not associated with, all, with all, any of the um, programs I'll talk about. And that's uh, because, of course, we would like to have somebody who leads on the program introduce these programs to you. But unfortunately, as you can imagine, a lot of our clinical colleagues are in the hospital dealing with the COVID-19 crisis. Um, now, I won't um, present this all by myself, though. So, um, Dr. Deborah Marcus is talking to you about gastroenterology. Uh, Professor Adina Michael Titus will talk about neuroscience. And Dr. John Connolly will talk about regenerative medicine. Um, now, there is a, a Q&A function. If you have any questions during the presentation, please um, put them into the Q&A uh, function. Um, also, please put there which course you're interested in, so then we'll make sure that it goes to the right person to answer your question. Um, we will also have a, a, a general Q&A session in the end if you don't get the chance to ask your question uh, during the, uh, the presentation. Okay, so um, we're from the Blizzard Institute, and um, here you can see some uh, pictures of the uh, of the Blizzard Institute. And it was a uh, it's a purpose built uh, uh, building, which was um, built about 12, 13 years ago. And um, you can see um, you can see the labs in this uh, picture here. So the labs are in the basement, and the labs actually they go underneath this walkway as well. Um, around the sites, um, there are write-up spaces and there are a few um, uh, offices dotted around as well. There's also designated meeting spaces and you can see one suspended here. This one is called Cloud. Um, now, the Blizzard Institute um, contains approximately 400 members of staff. That's not a nice picture. And so there's more than 120 academic faculty and these are scientists and clinicians. Um, on the education side, uh, we, um, we take part in the medical curriculum. Uh, we teach biomedical sciences students. Uh, we also host a BSc in uh, neuroscience. And um, we do a lot of postgraduate taught courses. And of course, that's what we're here for uh, this afternoon. Um, now, rest assured that all these courses are embedded within clinical practice and or research. And you'll hear some examples of that whilst we're going through. So the first course is uh, aesthetic medicine. Now there are the pathways that are available. Um, so there's an MSc, which is two years, a PG DIP two years, and a PG CERT for one year. And they're all, um, um, they're all part-time uh, courses. So who is it suitable for? So it's for uh, doctors, dentists, and nurses from the UK and internationally. And it's designed uh, specifically to provide you with a core curriculum to gain a more in-depth knowledge base in aesthetics. Uh, if you opt for the MSc, then it will also prepare you for a future research in the field of uh, aesthetics. Um, why should you um, take this course? Um, and I won't mention all the reasons. Um, it offers flexibility. You can study alongside your other commitments. You can take part in optional stimulating training through clinical days um, and understand, understanding the importance of evidence-based practice. Also developing a thorough knowledge of uh, clinical anatomy and physiology relevant to aesthetics. And it provides you with a solid foundation in aesthetic medicine and clinical management of the patient undergoing procedures. Structured teaching and uh, assessment. Um, so there's an, the MSc has um, eight uh, compulsory taught modules, and each module is assessed uh, through MCQ assessment and a 15 to, 1500 to 2000 word essay. Um, there's an end of the year uh, OSCE as well, which is, uh, which is in May. And then uh, for the MSc, you will also complete a 15,000 word dissertation. Now the PG DIP is exactly the same, except, except there is no uh, dissertation. The PG cert instead of uh, eight taught modules, there are uh, four taught modules. The examination is uh, is exactly the same. 
So the entry requirements, um, the degree requirements are a medical or dental degree uh, or a nursing degree. And uh, nurse applicants must also be registered with Nursing and Midwifery Council and have a minimum of four years working experience. Uh, the next course is uh, Biomedical Science or Medical Microbiology, uh, which is taught as either a, um, a one-year on-site uh, full-time MSc or a two-year uh, part-time uh, MSc. It's suitable for the full-time study, suitable for recent graduates in uh, biomedical science. For the part-time study, so it's those preparing for the next stage of your career, as it can enhance uh, career prospects. Um, but you must be able, uh, you must be employed in a suitable lab within the NHS, Public Health England, or the private sector. And of course, your employer must support your application, give you time to study, and provide a suitable project. Uh, the taught element of the course is provided one day a week, so you're required to, uh, to travel um, one day a week. And you will be expected to undertake additional private study as well, of course. Why should you take the course? Well, it's accredited by the Institute of Biomedical Sciences. Uh, you will receive training in, uh, in the Blizzard uh, labs. Uh, you've seen the nice pictures. Um, you'll hear from regular guest uh, speakers from within the NHS and Public Health England. Uh, and you will also benefit from the in interdisciplinary learning environment. I mentioned um, a lot of colleagues are clinicians. Uh, we have a lot of scientists and, and so there's a good, um, NHS Trust, and there are research meetings as well uh, within this center. Uh, this course is hosted by, so this is uh, immunobiology. Um, so, structured teaching and uh, assessment. There are seven compulsory modules, and it's assessed using a combination of final written and practical examinations and a series of in course assessments. Uh, now, the in-course assessments are designed to develop uh, key skills and um, they are, uh, for instance, public health campaign, data interpretation, management and, and professional reflections, uh, literature reviews, etc. Um, there's also one non-credit formative studies module. The project, um, um, you need to submit a 15,000 word dissertation. The entry requirements, so a 2-1 or above at undergraduate level in biomedical sciences. What have the students gone on to do? Um, so part-time students have progressed to senior posts within the NHS and, and uh, Public Health England, and many successfully completing the FRC path as well. Uh, many full-time students have found careers in the NHS and uh, PHE, and others have continued uh, doing PhD or into research. Um, in addition to clinical um, lab careers, students have also found uh, employment elsewhere. So, for instance, in scientific media, as parliamentary re researchers, etc. The next one is uh, clinical microbiology. Um, so, like uh, like the previous, uh, the biomedical science. This is uh, uh, provided as a, a one-year full-time MSc or a two years part-time MSc. Um, it's suitable for clinicians preparing for the MRC PATH exam, um, for clinicians in nursing working in infectious diseases, and for antimicrobial pharmacists who wish to explore clinical microbiology. Why should you take the course? Uh, you will receive hands-on training. Uh, well, it's the same as the last, uh, actually. So. Um, training in the blizzard in, in, in uh, different techniques, hearing from guest le lecturers from NHS and PHE, and the interdisciplinary learning environment. The structured teaching and assessment, so there's six compulsory modules, and they are assessed using a combination of final written and practical examinations and in and a series of in-course assessments. And like in the previous one, the in-course assessments are there to develop the skills and those skills are exactly the same as the previous course. Uh, and then eventually there is a 15,000 word dissertation as well due uh, for your project.
the entry requirements. Um, so you need a, a medical degree um, from a university recognized by the GMC or a minimum of a 2-1 um, in pharmacy or nursing. Uh, students have gone on to career of advancement in NHS or overseas. Clinical dermatology. So this is a, a PG dip, a one year part-time course. And um, for this course, there are two cohorts. So the first cohort is, uh, this, this is the UK program. Um, so they are for UK based, fully GMC registered GPs. And those attend four out of six on-site clinical days. Then there is an overseas program, obviously for doctors uh, who are outside the UK, but also for doctors who aren't either, who aren't fully GMC registered or cannot attend four out of the six uh, clinical days. Uh, now, who is it uh, suitable for? For general practitioners wanting uh, postgraduate training to deal with the dermatological workload. Uh, course deals with a whole range of common skin diseases, but also some less common dermatological conditions. Uh, GPs completing the program will therefore be better equipped to diagnose and man manage uh, dermatological cases in their practices. Why should you take the course? Well, the program is taught entirely by consultant dermatologists, so there's an enormous amount uh, of know-how. Um, if you're from Hong Kong or Singapore, then the qualification is quotable. Um, you will have access to weekly audiovisual material uh, to demonstrate patient cases and good practice. Um, students who are based overseas will also um, take part in live interactive online tutorials. And if you're part of the UK cohort, then there are those uh, clinical days I, I spoke about. Structured teaching and assessment. So there are six compulsory taught modules. Um, there's a weekly online MCQ uh, style questions, uh, which are based on, on the material from that week. And there is a 1500 word written report relating to the cutaneous neoplasia module. Um, then there is a final four hour written exam. And if you are part of the overseas cohort, that will be arranged at the British Council Centre or, or something similar. The entry requirements, so it's an MBBS or basic medical degree. Um, it's good if you have a prior uh, experience in derm dermatology, but it's not essential. And as, as I mentioned, students wishing to join the UK cohort must be fully GMC registered uh, and be able to at least uh, um, attend four out of the six on-site clinical days. Uh, UK-based students who are not fully GMC registered or cannot um, attend four out of the six clinical days need to join the overseas cohort. Okay, and I'm now going to um, hand over um, to Dr. Deborah Marcos, who's going to talk about gastroenterology. Um, hello, um, uh, everyone. Thank you so much for um, giving me the turn. I hope that everyone is safe and okay. Anyway, so I'm going to speak a little bit about our course, which is very, very good. I'm not biased or anything. Um, so the pathways available to get in is, uh, we have a non-site part of the program, which includes uh, the MC, uh, which lasts for one year full time, and uh, the PGD, uh, which lasts uh, nine months full time as well. And we have the modality of online learning with uh, the MSc part of the program, which is two years part time. And then we have the PTD uh, online as well, which lasts nine months full time or two years part time. So quite a lot of options. So who is this uh, program suitable for? We, we have a lot of uh, clinicians, current clinicians, aspiring gastroenterologists, but also intercalating medical students who have successfully completed at least three years of their degree. And not only that, but we also welcome uh, specialist nurses and allied healthcare professionals who are looking to further their understanding of gastroenterology, pathology and nutrition. Most of the time, these are specialist nurses that are already working in the field. Um, but basically that, you know, that's, that's the, main, the main thing. Um, why should you take this course? Why, why uh, do, do I think that um, 
they are the main advantages? Well, in comparison with other uh, gastro uh, programs, it's the longest established uh, of its kind. It was said by Professor Dane Parvi Kumar. Um, it offers flexibility, so you can study alongside other commitments. We have a lot of junior doctors. Uh, that are doing it um, and they can work and study at the same time. Uh, our teaching faculty um, is very, very good. It's international recognized in their fields and they are both clinical and non-clinical academics from Barton, the London School of Medicine. Um, it is also approved by the BSE, by the British Society of Gastroenterology. And one thing that many students like, especially, well, you know, the ones that want to expand their, um, their knowledge in endoscopy, is the on-site students are able to have hands-on endoscopy training with an endoscopy simulator. Um, the structure of the, of the course, uh, well, first of all, the BGD has six compulsory modules. Uh, this includes basic of GI disease, endoscopy uh, and GI investigation, liver and pancreatic disease, adult GI, neurogastro, uh, pediatric, and uh, nutritional diseases of um, and GI infection. Sorry, uh, the the modules are assessed by coursework and an end of term written examination. The MSc is exactly the same six modules as the PGD, but the difference is that they, the students of uh, carrying, uh, carrying out the MSc, they have a research project uh, examined by a written dissertation. Uh, and then they also have a viva or presentation in September. The way that we teach, uh, it's uh, by various methods, including seminars, lab practice sessions, self-directed learning, tutorials, case presentations, all of them will be supported by reading lists and journal papers. And the entry requirements are uh, M MBBS or basic medical degree, but as I mentioned before, we also welcome hands on uh, or you know uh, especially nurses uh, who are already in the field of gastroenterology and they want to expand somehow uh, their their knowledge and also intercalated students that have completed three years of undergraduate program thank you well um the following program is uh, the neuroscience and translational uh, medicine um, uh, program and uh, this program is um, offered on site and this is uh, a program which is uh, offered as a full MSc um, so um, MSc one year full time and also uh, it can be taken at the level of a certificate um, one year part time uh, who is it suitable for? Um, it is suitable for uh, science undergraduates, uh, medical undergraduates, and also medical practitioners. Medical undergraduates, for example, uh, can choose the master's program uh, as an option uh, when they want to intercalate. Um, and, and these uh, various uh, candidates for and applicants on this program um, they all have um, the, the same um, motivation. They want to deepen their, their, their knowledge of neuroscience and also uh, acquire um, uh, a very thorough understanding of the, 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 the challenges we have in neurotherapeutics um, and, and in general, the latest concepts in, uh, uh, in modern uh, uh, therapeutics of neurological disease. So, um, why should you take this course? Well, um, the course is um, both a, a neuroscience course, a very advanced uh, neuroscience course, but a, a more general translational medicine course in the sense that um, 
it gives students a very uh, thorough grounding in the, the basic principles underlying translational medicine and the whole process of, of uh, drug discovery and drug development. Um, and, and the skills acquired are skills that uh, can be applied not only in the field of uh, therapeutics for uh, diseases of the nervous system, but they are generic skills. So students who take this course would acquire skills which are uh, easily transferable um, to uh, another field of, of uh, medical research. Um, so the, the course will explore um, the drug discovery pathway and will also discuss uh, laboratory methods and analyze in depth the models used in, in drug dis discovery and also uh, give a, a very um, detailed overview of uh, the methodology uh, involved in, in clinical trials. So uh, overall the students will learn all the steps involved in the development in, and implementation and of, of new treatments um, and uh, how to apply this, this knowledge um, in a, a future professional role. So in terms of structure, um, teaching and assessment. Um, if applicants take the uh, PG cert, um, this is one compulsory module and one elective module, and the assessment is a combined assessment of a final written examination and uh, a series of, of in course assessments, which can be literature reviews, uh, oral presentations, um, case analysis, and um, also uh, clinical trial protocol discussions. For the, uh, the applicants, the students who take uh, the full master's program, uh, they can take um, two compulsory modules and four elective modules. So the two com compulsory modules um, are really modules very focused on the drug discovery and development uh, processes and pathways. And the four elective modules are more specialized modules um, and they, they can cover specific uh, areas in neuroscience, such as neurotrauma, stroke, um, neurodegenerative disease, um, uh, neuroimmune disease, um, uh, chronic pain and epilepsy or neuro-oncology. And um, more recently, we have also introduced an option whereby students can take uh, modules um, from um, another master's uh, offered by the Blizzard Institute, the master's in, in regenerative medicine, uh, especially students who, who are very interested in, in stem cell biology. So there's quite a lot of flexibility. And, and again, the assessment is based on a combination of a final written examination and a variety of in-course assessments. Finally, uh, the master's also, pr program also includes uh, the research project component, uh, an 11 week laboratory or clinically based uh, research project assessed by uh, a dissertation. So, um, the entry requirements uh, well, the entry requirements, the generic requirements are um, a first degree um, at uh, 2 1 level, so upper second class or above first class. I, I must uh, say that we do consider exceptional cases uh, with um, a grade uh, lower than uh, upper second, but these are uh, just exceptional cases. And the undergraduate degree can be in neuroscience, pharmacology, biomedical science, or, or related discipline. Of course, we, uh, we accept medical students, as I, I said previously, and also qualified physicians. Um, what do our students do after they finish the program? Well, there are a variety of options. Uh, scientists um, often opt to continue their studies at doctoral level, so uh, continue their studies with a PhD, or um, continue a career as a scientist in the public or private sector, working with a variety of organi organizations, research councils in the United Kingdom, or charities, or or in the private sector with biotechnology or pharmaceutical companies, or even in the field of clinical trials. Um, uh, some of our scientist uh, alumni um, choose to continue their studies and read medicine. Um, medical students in general return to medical studies, and of course, uh, 
qualified physicians who take this course uh, have the option to continue with a PhD if they wish, or they return to their uh, specialist training in neurology or on neurosurgery. Hello, um, my name is John Connolly. I'm uh, a reader in uh, bioengineering here in the Blizzard Institute. And along with my uh, colleague, Dr. Kristen Brown, uh, we lead the master's degree in regenerative medicine. Uh, so for those of you who may not be familiar with the field of regenerative medicine, um, it's a highly interdisciplinary subject, uh, and it basically involves the use of cell or biological components to try to repair or regenerate uh, damaged tissues. And so it uh, encompasses uh, several fields of study, including stem cell biology, um, engineering and material science, uh, and clinical medicine. Um, so the degree that we uh, offer here uh, is available as an on-site program, and it's a one-year uh, full-time study uh, leading to the MSc degree. Uh, the program is suitable for a wide range of students, so um, it's open to undergraduate science students. Um, most of our, our students are biomedical sciences students, but we also have uh, chemists and engineers uh, on the course as well. Um, and likewise, it's also open to um, students with a clinical background in either medicine or dentistry uh, who may be interested in uh, expanding their scientific training and uh, developing specific skills uh, in regenerative medicine. And uh, many of the students who join the course are uh, interested in pursuing further uh, study at the PhD level um, or using the master's degree as a way to develop their career leading to uh, employment either in the pharmaceutical or the, the biotech uh, industry. So uh, just to highlight a few uh, unique aspects of the course. So as I mentioned before, the regenerative medicine is a highly interdisciplinary field. Uh, and to deliver this program, we uh, have a wide range of uh, teaching from, from experts in stem cell biology, cellular regeneration, biomaterials, uh, and tissue engineering. Uh, it's also a highly interactive program, so we make use of a lot of tutorials and journal clubs uh, and discussion and, and debate between the students and the, the lecturers. Um, as we're based in the medical school, we also have close links with the uh, hospitals at St. Bart's and the Royal London, uh, and many of the teaching is delivered by clinicians who are uh, actively involved in race research related to uh, regenerative medicine. And then continuing along the uh, multidisciplinary uh, theme, uh, several of the modules are taught by our colleagues in the School of Engineering and Material Science, and those focus on uh, biomaterials and tissue engineering uh, strategies that are important for uh, regenerative medicine. Um, also highlighted by several other uh, uh, colleagues here that the Blizzard Institute uh, research facilities are really uh, outstanding and through the research projects the students on the course will have uh, an opportunity to make use of these for their projects. In terms of the uh, tr structure, uh, we have eight taught modules, uh, four in the uh, first semester and four in the second semester. And these are assessed through uh, a combination of exams, uh, essays, projects, and written uh, and oral presentations. And then over the uh, final semester, over the summer, uh, the students will carry out a 12-week uh, research project, uh, which is uh, laboratory-based. And this will uh, allow them to gain um, hands-on expertise in a um, particular uh, area of regenerative medicine. And so, the projects typically cover um, topics such as uh, basic stem cell biology, um, mechanisms of tissue repair and regeneration, uh, but also uh, biomaterial development and uh, tissue engineering. Uh, and this research project, project is assessed through a 10,000 word uh, written dissertation and oral presentation uh, at the end of the year. We typically require uh, a 2 1 in a science or clinical subject uh, at the undergraduate level. Um, we do consider uh, 2 2 degrees uh, if the candidate has um, particular research or professional experience that might be relevant. Um, but typically, uh, we look for a, a 2 1 degree in 
some type of uh, science, whether it's biological sciences, physical sciences, or uh, clinical medicine. Um, and following on from the uh, MSc in regenerative medicine, um, many of our graduates go on to study PhDs in uh, similar subjects. We've had uh, several students go on to pursue medical degrees, and a number of our students um, uh, gain full-time employment in biotech and pharmaceutical institute uh, companies or as research assistants within institutions and uh, universities. Okay, and the next course is emergency and resuscitation medicine. Um, so the pathways available here is an, an MSc, a three years part-time, or a PG dip, which is two years part-time. Um, now, who is it suitable for? So it's for doctors, nurses, paramedics, and physicians associates who are looking to progress their career, make a difference in the care and, and in their local areas, and also to educate and train others. Um, who should take this course? So there's an unparalleled access to expert clinicians uh, and an innovative research-driven curriculum, which will help you develop your area of practice. Uh, it offered flexibility. Uh, of course, it's part-time uh, study. And uh, we have an excellent worldwide reputation in emergency medicine, trauma, surgery, and critical care through our connections to the HEMS, so the Helicopter Emergency Medical Services, and you saw the, uh, the picture in the previous slide, and the C4TS, the Center for Trauma Sciences. So you will acquire an understanding of specialized techniques applicable to your own research or advanced scholarship. The structured teaching and assessment, so years one and two contain four compulsory modules each. Uh, each module contains lectures and recommended readings from experts. And there are also uh, weekly online tutorials. Each taught module is assessed by either a written assignment or recorded presentation and online MCQ exam. Um, only MSc students will focus on the final dissertation in year three. The entry requirements. So it's a, a medical degree or a 2-1 um, in an undergraduate uh, degree comprising either of nursing, paramedic, or physician's associate studies. Um, you must be currently employed in emergency medicine, critical care, acute medicine, medicine or pre-hospital care. And there is also a requirement for a minimum experience. So for doctors, it's two years in relevant areas. For nurses, it's five years in emergency or critical care. For paramedics, either five years or three years plus 12 months as a critical care paramedic or as a dedicated HEMS uh, system. Orthopedic trauma science. So the, uh, the pathway which is available is a two-year part-time MSc, uh, suitable for doctors, nurses, and trauma, uh, trauma physiotherapists who are looking to progress their career or to make a difference uh, in the local area, uh, either in clinical practice or to uh, train others. Um, and also those looking to excel in research and to um, publish their research and also to, to, to go to conferences, etc., to talk about their research. It's accredited uh, by the Royal College of Surgeons of England, and you will develop the knowledge, technical skill, decision-making and professionalism, safely deliver a core set of clinical functions in the management of injured patients. And it will also uh, help your, uh, to meet your local, regional and national needs for managing orthopedic trauma. Uh, there will also be the opportunity to, to gain hands-on experience in the optional two-week extensive summer school. Now, the structured teaching and assessment. So year one, there are seven modules, uh, which run consecutively for four to five weeks each. And then the final module is elective. Uh, there are two options. Each module contains lectures and recommended reading from experts. And there's also weekly online tutorials. Um, each taught module is assessed by either a written assignment or a recorded presentation and an online MCQ exam. Um, of course, you will receive uh, written feedback 
um, as you go along the course. And actually, that that's the same for every course we've been talking about. Um, feedback is, of course, essential uh, in 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 the um, in the progression of uh, of students, and that's provided in all courses. Um, and year two then focuses on research and the final dissertation. So the entry requirements, medical degree or uh, 2-1 or above at undergraduate level in nursing or physiotherapy, a professional clinical experience in managing patients with traumatic injuries also required. What have uh, students gone on to do? Um, career progression to more senior roles in uh, orthopedics, and also uh, publishing and presenting research um, has been done as well. Trauma sciences. So this is a year's part-time MSc, suitable for doctors, nurses, paramedics who are looking to progress their career and again, make, make a difference in uh, the care and the education in their uh, local environment. And also, uh, so why should you take this course? So it's accredited by the Royal College of Surgeons of England, like the previous one. Um, you'll gain a thorough grounding in the principles underlying the disease of trauma. And again, there's, there's teaching by some of the UK leading trauma experts. Um, and the opportunity of hands-on training in the optional two-week intensive summer school. And you'll develop a broad and critical understanding of developments in trauma care and gain, gain research skills through independent study. The structured teaching and assessment. So year one, there are seven modules which run consecutively for four to five weeks. And then the last module is uh, elective. So there's three options. Uh, each module contains lectures recommended reading from leading medical professionals. And each module is assessed by either a written assignment uh, and an MCQ exam, or just an online MCQ exam. There are weekly online tutorials uh, to support lectures and assessment and students are again provided with feedback uh, as they go along and then year two uh, is, is uh, the research and the final display. The entry requirements, so a medical degree or a 2-1 or above at undergraduate level in nursing or, nursing or paramedic science. Uh, professional clinical experience in managing patients with uh, trauma injury is also required. What have students gone on to do? So publish uh, dissertations in journals and present their research at conferences. Um, there's been a PhD, uh, PhDs are, are, are done as well afterwards. Uh, create and lead a local trauma network and also train and educate others in trauma management. Trauma, and this is the, uh, the course that's sort of related to trauma sciences. This is the military and humanitarian part. And this is also a two-year part-time MSc. The, the, it's suitable for doctors, nurses, and paramedics looking to progress in their careers or make a difference locally. Um, and also um, want to get familiar with research to publish and also um, to, to, uh, to conferences. Why should you take the course? This one is also accredited by the Royal College of Stu Surgeons uh, of England. Um, you'll develop a broad and critical understanding of developments in trauma care, including within uh, military and disaster settings. Uh, you will have the opportunity to learn from some of the world's leading trauma experts. And again, with this one as well, there's the possibility of hands-on training, the optional summer school. And then there's the uh, research through independent study. The structured teaching and assessment. So year one, seven core modules. Each module, again, lectures and recommended reading from leading medical professionals. Each module is assessed by either a written assignment, online MCQ, um, or just an online MCQ exam. Weekly online tutorials are held to support lectures and assessments. And year two focuses on the research and the final dissertation. The entry requirements, so medical degree or a 2-1 or above at undergraduate level in nursing or paramedic science, uh, a professional clinical experience in managing 
patients with traumatic injury is also required. What the students have gone, gone on to do is it, the same list as the, uh, the, 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 the trauma science. So it's uh, publishing dissertations in journals, presented research at conferences, leading a PhD, uh, creating leading a local trauma network, and training in uh, educating others in trauma management. Okay, thank you all for uh, attending, and uh, we'll close this session now. If you need to um, um, make a note of the contact, if you have any questions, then please do so now. Um, and thanks again for your attendance. Bye.